Greetings, friends, and welcome to the United Methodist Church in Palm Springs. Um, wherever you may be tuning in, we're glad you're here. And we're in our third week of the series, Springing into Joy. We're learning about ways that we can encourage more joyfulness in life because after all, Jesus came, quote, that our joy may be complete. If you've been following this series, we hope that you're feeling more joyful already with the tools that you are learning. Um, if you're here for the first time, we hope you're ready for some serious uplift. Today, Pastor Jane is going to be exploring an incredibly powerful tool for engendering that joy for our lives in the world. Um, Bishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama in their um, Book of Joy call this the pillar of generosity. Um, giving liberally of ourselves to others. There's really no better way to heal and transform all that ails us. Even though, as Archbishop Tutu says, generosity proves that God may not be very good at math. Um, today, Jane and our singers, um, Anna and Christian, will explain what that crazy bishop might be talking about, about God's bad math being really, really good news. Make yourself at home and get ready to fly. Um, we welcome our um, siblings who are worshiping with us today. Whether we know you or not, let's reach out and say hello, um, share your name, and maybe a favorite gift that you gave um, this Christmas or recently. Thinking about that bit of giving probably will bring you a good jolt of joy right off the bat. Hello, Pastor Jane here, and I too welcome you to this time of worship and wonder as we exploring what it means to spring into joy with God, with Jesus, and with the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs. It's going to be a wonderful service today, and I look forward to exploring generosity with you. And let us begin as we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit into our beings and into our space that spirit that helps us know, that, that brings us knowledge of true generosity. As we breathe in and breathe out, breathing in that spirit of God that created the universe and continues to recreate our lives, recreate every moment, recreate our world in all the ways we'll allow it to. Let us breathe that spirit into our minds and into our hearts and into the whole of our beings, filling us to overflowing with God's peace and God's love and God's grace and this instant gift of all these wonderful qualities. 
fills us with joy. Oh, great and gracious God, we're so grateful for your presence with us always and for the way your presence comes to us and blesses us and blesses us to be a blessing to others. We're so grateful for this time to open ourselves to your presence in a new way, learn perhaps new things about your way, and discover perhaps a new way you would have us be in the world and bring your party. May this time indeed be a blessing to you, and be a blessing to us, be a blessing to the whole of the world in all the ways you will. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to hear our scripture reading today. It comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And one of the purposes of Paul's writing this letter to the Corinthians was that he was going to be coming to the church again. He'd been away for a while. And one of his tasks was to take up an offering that was to go to the church in Jerusalem. It was a church that was oftentimes called the Church of the Poor. We're not exactly sure why it was called that, except that we do think that that church um, did need a lot of help. And so Paul had offered to, uh, to, to get this offering. And because uh, the, the Christians that are part of this church in the Corinth are primarily Gentiles, they don't really understand what giving an offering to God and why we do that and how that works, they don't really understand. So G or Paul decides to explain it to them in the following way. Take it away, Paul. Our scripture um, today is from Paul's second letter to the Christians in Corinth, 2 Corinthians um, 9, beginning at verse 6. I'm reading from the message translation, which is a really fun and um, playful um, translation of, of the scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in giving. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one of the psalmists put it, he throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. This most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something that you can then give away, which grows into full formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Carrying out this social relief work involves far more than, than helping to meet the bare needs of poor Christians. It also produces abundant and bountiful thanksgiving to God. This relief offering is a prod to live at your very best, showing your gratitude to God by being openly obedient to the plan, to the plain meeting of the message of Christ. You show your gratitude through your generous offerings to your needy brothers and sisters, and really toward everyone. Meanwhile, moved by the extravagance of God in your lives, they'll respond by praying for you in passionate intercession for whatever you need. Thank God for this gift, God's gift. No language can praise it enough. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, 
you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny. Hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. For love is something if you give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. So let's go dancing till the break of day. And if there's a piper, we can pay. For love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It was late in the winter, and Cammy Walker was one hot mess. And she had every reason to be. At age 31, two years after her marriage to the man of her dreams, she was struggling in the worst way with multiple sclerosis, which is, as you may know, an autoimmune disease that attacks the nervous system in the brain and the spine and for which there is no cure. Cammie had been diagnosed only one month after her wedding. Ever since then, life had become pretty much an ongoing nightmare. She'd had to quit her well-paying job as a marketing executive in San Francisco because her body had become just too debilitated. And now she and her husband, an aspiring actor, were living on a much more limited budget. If she felt a little better, she could do some consulting work, which would, she would love and which would, of course, help the family finances. But no, she was in endless pain, and doctors just couldn't figure out how to help. She couldn't sleep. She couldn't eat. She couldn't poop. She could barely walk. She couldn't see out of her right eye. She had no energy or strength. She couldn't not not be angry at the world 24-7. After all, she was just 31, and she'd only been married for two years. She was uncontrollably vacillating between severe suicidal depression and mania. It was all so unfair, so infuriating, so hopeless. It was at this time in that late winter that she decided to call an old friend from her days in San Francisco. Her name was Mabali, and she was from South Africa. Mabali definitely fit the true definition of a traditional wise woman who was deeply spiritual with her African roots and professionally worked in the hospital world marrying Western and alternative medicine. Mabali heard Cammie's very sad, desperate story. And she had one prescription to suggest, to order. Mabali said, give away 29 gifts in 29 days. What, Cammie said? Cammie, you need to stop thinking about yourself, Mabali said. When you spend all your time and energy focusing on your pain, you're feeding your disease. You need to move your energy in a positive direction. Giving of any kind, whether it be a gift that is material, emotional, or spiritual, will do the trick. It will cause you to focus on what you have to offer others, inviting abundance into your life. That's what will make the difference. Cami really didn't have any idea what Mabali was talking about. But after hemming and hawing and about trying it, she finally relented. I mean, after all, what did she have to lose? Again, the deal was give a gift to someone else every day for 29 days. It could be a big gift. It could be a small gift. It didn't matter. What did matter was that you gave that gift intentionally and without any feeling of obligation or expectation or reciprocity. It must be given freely, and every day for 29 days. If you skip a day, then you have to start over. That length of 29 days of moving energy from yourself onto others is what was key. So the first day, 
Cammie really had no idea what to give and to whom. She called her friend Lori, also an MS sufferer, to see how she was doing. It so happened Lori, usually very upbeat and strong, was in a really bad funk. Her husband was away and she was lonely and feeling unusually lost. Suddenly, that phone call was not just a rote gesture, but something important, and Cammy was engaged. Cammy offered to get together with Lori in a couple of days when it worked out for both of them, and hence that offer to get together, well, it really brightened Lori's spirits. And when Cammy got off the phone, she, decide, she realized that she was feeling calmer and lighter and maybe even smiling a little, something that she didn't do much at all in those days. She found now that she had the desire to go and have some breakfast at a nearby cafe, and her husband took her there on his way to do some errands, and that cafe was crowded, and because the mo her mobility was limited and she needed to sit near a door, it meant the only place she had to sit was at a table where someone was also sitting, a guy in an AT&T shirt. And she struck up a conversation with him, something she usually didn't do, but she had the energy to do it this day. The gentleman was very friendly and asked about why she was using a cane, which she needed to use in those days because her mobility was so limited. Was, was, did she have an accident? I mean, she was so young, that was the obvious answer, ask, question you would ask. And Cammie said no, she, she talked about this, her multiple sclerosis and the, some of the struggles that she was having. And they actually enjoyed a very nice conversation over greasy food that you have at the diner. And then he left, and when the waitress returned, she said, you know, your breakfast is paid by that gentleman in the AT&T shirt. What? That had never happened to her before. Now she felt even more energized. She thought, I think I might want to walk home on my own, which is something that she hadn't done for a very long time. It was only six blocks, but for the longest time that was impossible. Well, Cammie decided, I'm going to take as long as it takes, but I'm going to get home. And she made it. She was amazed. And um, she kept asking herself, wow, what else can I do? And she realized that, get that gift, the gift that she had given on that first day was that phone call to Lori. And all these other good things had happened. And then she went to sleep and slept more soundly than she had in months. Then there was day two, and the second day of giving a gift. Cammy and a friend had met for lunch, and they were taking a slow walk, because they needed to afterwards, and passed by some teenagers that were putting on a little street performance of breakdancing in front of the Kodak Theater in Hollywood, because Cammy and her husband now lived in LA. After this little, little performance, the leader was passing a hat. And Cammy wondered, oh, do I have any money? She dug around her pockets and, well, she pulled out a wad that was the, the $5 bill that was for an emergency only, but it was the only money she had. And, well, it's going to go to the breakdancers today. So she put it in this cap. And the breakdancer leader was, was so, like, taken by this $5 bill. He's like, wow, everybody, look, the rich white lady gave me a $5 bill. And the rest of the crowd was thought this was fun and, 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 uh, and a, a chance to also give $5 or maybe 10 And there was this kind of game of who's going to give how much money um, in that hat. And, and, and Cammie was just amazed that, that this, this experience had become so playful and because of her. <sighs> Thus began the creation of the best-selling book, 29 Gifts in 29 Days that she wrote, which is actually, essentially, the journal that she created of what happened to her as she chose each day to give a new gift. It could be big, it could be small, it could be material, it could be emotional, it could be spiritual. Sometimes she gave big gifts, like a $100 donation to a friend's charity that was way more than she could afford. But she was in such a generous mood to do that and so grateful for all the friend had done for her, she just decided to take the leap. Sometimes the gifts were very small. Like one day she was rubbing her cat's belly 
because that's his favorite place to receive her love. She couldn't think of anything else to give that day, but she knew that would make a difference of some sort. And that meant that she didn't have to start over because she hadn't given any other gift. She was very careful not to count anything given in a spirit of obligation or roteness or expectation of receiving anything in return. And almost always, the day would turn out to be surprisingly rich in love, gratitude, and joy. Even and especially after she realized she could rub her cat's belly to the fullness of his content. She looked forward always to seeing what tomorrow's adventures might bring. And I, the reader, was always so interested and excited to learn what it did. And by the end of 29 days, by the end of this book, Kemi notes these changes in her life. She's happier, healthier, and more in awe with the gift of life. She's smiling and laughing more and more every day. Her body was stronger and recovering from the MS flare that had plagued her for months. She was even able to stop walking with a cane by the end of week two. Her business consulting business had exploded with new opportunities. She'd started reconnecting with an amazing community of family and friends she'd been pushing away out of fear since her MS diagnosis. And she was forming a whole new community of friends and clients in her new home of LA. She was experiencing deeper intimacy in her relationship with her husband. And she remarks, and this is only the beginning. And she ends her book by um, describing the biggest gift that she was receiving, an incredible spiritual awakening. She says, quote, everything belongs to the divine. God is in everything, including me. When we give and we receive, we are connecting to that force. Today I see my interdependence with other people and with God as a source of power in my life. In the wise words of Mahatma Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. I send out a prayer of gratitude to Mabali as my gift for this day. And I realize something I think I've known on some level practically since the beginning. Tomorrow, I'm going to start all over again. Another 29 days of gift giving with day one. This book is such a treasure. And if we distill the wisdom and the, from the experience of Cami, what gift giving, what sacred gift giving is all about, well, it starts with intention. We have to make sure that we are conscious of the gift that we're giving, understanding perhaps how hard it might be to give or how, um, how much we want to give it or who we're giving it to and why. We just have it in our minds. And then we give that intentional gift and the next thing that we experience and discover is expansion. Because for some reason, that gift that we give, it's more than just something from us that is handed over to the other person. But as we see in Cammie's experience day after day, that gift turns into all sorts of other gifts. It brought all sorts of gifts to Cammie. It brought all sorts of gifts to the person she was giving it to and people around her. It was like uh, some kind of a nuclear explosion that just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the third piece of sacred gift giving is then as we're aware that we've given this gift and we're aware of just how many ways that gift is exploding and expanding, we are just in awe of the God whose spirit creates this amazing chain reaction of goodness and love and provision and hope and healing and we know that, we, and we want to do it all over again because that process never 
ever stops. And knowing that and experiencing this, this gift giving in each and every of the phases, it just fills us with such joy because it is also, uh, it feels so good and it does so much good and it truly is so enjoyable, fun, playful, and life-giving. Who doesn't want to be a great gift giver, even if the gift we give is really small? We give it with intention. God will do amazing things with it and continue to fill us with more and more awe. And will fill others who witness what we're doing, or, we, or others who we teach how to do this, fill them with awe too. So they want to be sacred and amazing gift givers too. This process of giving with intention, and then experiencing expansion, and then being filled with awe, that is basically what St. Paul is teaching to his congregation in Corinth about the adventure at hand in giving this offering to the church of the poor in Jerusalem. He tells his congregation, you don't want to be a stingy planter because you're just going to get a stingy crop. What does he mean by that? Well, it's like when you're giving a gift without intention. When you're giving a gift that really um, is not of any real importance to you, it um, is kind of a forgettable act on your part. Um, it's something you're doing rote, maybe kind of um, just numb. Um, and, uh, and, and when you do that, nothing's going to really happen. But if you're a lavish planter, if you're someone who puts a lot of energy and, in, and um, thought and heart into what you're doing, that gift is something that is going to create incredible abundance, that expansion that we're talking about. And it also reminds me of what Bishop Tutu says in the Book of Joy about the way of generosity and how it, it's an, it is an example of God's bad math. Because Bishop Tutu says, you know, when, when we give up something and give it to somebody else, you think that that we're now subtracting something so that person can add something. But what happens is when we add something to that person, a lot gets added to us too. It doesn't make any sense, but that's God's crazy math, and that's what we get to enjoy when we give with intention, and we give with heart, and we give with lavishness. Paul goes on to then talk about how God's way is to just bring incredible abundance to this gift that has been given lavishly. That abundance um, it blesses not only the, the person who's receiving it, but it blesses the giver too. He talks about how this church in Jerusalem, when they receive your gift that is given lavishly with all sorts of, of love and, and intention, that will affect the congregation. And they will want to become better Christians because they're so inspired by your generosity. And they will want to pray for you because of that love that they suddenly have for you. And you will receive that prayer, and that will give you more spirit and more um, ability to do the things that you want to do to bring the gospel into the world and bring that hope and love to others. And also enjoy that hope and love for yourself. And as you keep doing this, and as you keep realizing that, that this is God's way, and it's just about creating more and more abundance for more and more people, well, no language can praise this way enough. Paul really feels like he's about to burst out of his skin in joy at talking about how wonderful is this experience of holy gift-giving, moving our energy from emphasis on ourselves, out into the world in some way, seeing what God does with it, and being able to do nothing but experience great joy and great praise and amazing healing and who knows where all of this might lead. We are in the process of a 
financial campaign here at the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs, our annual giving campaign. And when these campaigns come around, it can be easy to just go on automatic pilot and think, well, what did I give last year? I think I'll give it this year. Or my situation hasn't changed, so I'll just give this year because that's what I gave last year. Um, or whatever we might be thinking. Not to, not to put lavish attention on what it is that we might truly want to give. Or maybe what we're feeling, even though our situation may, may be whatever it is, maybe feeling called to give. Maybe taking a huge leap of faith and giving something super generous. Like when Cami decided, today's the day to give $100, even though I still have a lot of debt. Nothing killed her, and it built her capacity for joy and capacity for gift giving and healing in more ways than she could have known. We don't know. But it's up to each and every one of us, I think, to, to do some deep exploring and to do some prayer time and to, to really think about what intentionally do I want to give to God and God's work through the church and give to God through this church and the ways that I get to learn more about my relationship with God in this community. And then to, as we give that gift intentionally, look forward to seeing how that gift expands and how many ways our giving blesses not only the, 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 all the projects and the people we're able to touch by this campaign, but also how it blesses us and grows our faith and grows our joy and grows our confidence that we have nothing to be afraid of. I think I've told you before my favorite giving story about one year early in my career as a pastor, and I was helping somebody out with $40, and I went to the, my ATM to give them $40, and once I took the ATM money out, I realized I'd given away my last $40, and I was freaked out. I'd suddenly given away everything. I was crazy to still give it away, but I did. And then about 10 minutes later, I got a phone call from the producers of the TV game show, The Weakest Link, who was doing a pastor version of The Weakest Link, and I got on the show, and I won $6,500. That's crazy. But these are the kind of goofy blessings, wonderful, joyful blessings, that come when we intentionally give. And then, like I am now when I think about that story, just filled with awe about how great our God is, and how we truly have nothing to be afraid of, because God will provide for us, even if it's not in the ways we expect, certainly not in the ways we expect, but ways that cause us to be ever more interdependent with one another, to create beautiful community with one another, to be more creative, and especially to be more joyful. And wouldn't it be great this year as we, each of us, give and make that pledge to our campaign, as we do it with intention and as we experience all sorts of exciting expansion and awe, what a great, fun year we'll have in store. I mean, we do have a lot of fun and a lot of joy together, but my guess is it will only exponentially increase the more we say yes to Paul's prescription for gift giving. It's just like a magic penny. Hold on tight and you won't have any. But lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. For love is something that you give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Love is something that you give it away, cause you'll end up having more. Can you believe it? Thanks be to God. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful 
heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. Christ his son. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the So the theme of our um, annual giving campaign for 2023 is give in to joy. Um, just give in to it. Um, and so with that theme, we invite each of you to think about not only giving this week, um, you can give through text, you can give online, you can give by mailing to the PO box, but not just for this week. Think about what the weeks and the months might add up to. Think about how you might stretch yourself Think about how much joy do I want to um, experience and to share this year as, um, as I partner with the United Methodist Church in Palm Springs to make a blessing and a difference in so many lives. Hello and greetings from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I'm Mike Stephen. And I'm Al Cottrell. We're proud to say we're members of the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs. Though it's beautiful here in PV, we surely miss all of you, our church family and friends at UMC. Back in 2019, we were searching for a new church home, and our church friend Alan, who previously had gone to MCC or the Gay Church in Cathedral City with us, told us about UMC of Palm Springs. From the very first visit to UMC, Pastor Jane and all of you, the congregation, made us feel completely welcome and accepted, and that filled our hearts with joy. And we knew that this is a house where God's love and joy shines in abundance. With the most amazing leadership from Pastor Jane, who of course has a heart filled with God's love and joy and laughter, and as we all know, shares it freely. We knew we'd found a new church home. UMC is a church that completely embraces God's love and joy and surprises us every week with the truth of God's party. Both our friends in the community and our church family tell us that they see such a joyful, positive light in us both. And we know that that's all due to our church. It's been a heartfelt, internal and spiritual change for us in our day-to-day -day lives and we know it's because of our ex joyful experiences at UMC. And we know that that joyfulness in our hearts and spirits brings us even closer to our God, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. UMC Palm Springs has only strengthened our desire to help others 
and to help make the world a better place to share. Absolutely. With all of love, kindness, and joy, and enlightenment we've received from our church, we are compelled and moved to financially support UMC of Palm Springs. And you, and we pray that you'll be moved that way as well. May God bless you all and have a beautiful day. Bye from Bye. Mexico. Bye. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, John Boy. <laughs> No, truly, I'm so grateful for the talents of so many people and the offerings of so many to make today's service truly special. And I'm so grateful that you are here today and look forward to seeing you next week. Next week is going to be the culmination of our giving campaign. And so if you are feeling called and it's time for you to give your pledge for the coming year, um, I invite you to, uh, to do that next Sunday. We're going to consecrate those, those cards and those gifts um, even if you are uh, not with us in person, we're going to have a special way of blessing your, your wishes and your giving for the coming year. I also want to invite you to participate in what's going to be a great book study. We're going to be looking at this wonderful book, The Book of Joy, uh, by Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. And it's going to start uh, Monday night, the 22nd of January, on Zoom at 6.30 and the information, the Zoom link, the Zoom number is, uh, is, the meeting number is here on your screen, and you can also check that out on our weekly email. If that's what you get, you can go to our website, or you can call the church office. And now let's hear our blessing as we move into this world, this, this crazy world that can be so scary, and yet when we let go and give our energy and give of who we are to God and to the world can be so wonderful. Hear this blessing. May that peace of Christ, that's the presence of God, that is always at work, expanding all the good things about life in us and around us, if only we will let it. May that spirit guide us as we move towards those we love, as we journey towards those who we have yet to meet, as we journey towards those whom we fear, and that may even be ourselves. May we discover in offering goodness, offering a gift, we make and we discover and we celebrate how it makes all the difference in the world. Amen.